Oh my god. This is the best technique in the game. Hey, Gobliu here. If you love dealing damage to enemies or even yourself, you're going to absolutely love Jing Liu. Her DPS is outstanding and only needs ally HP and a bit of ramp up time as a sacrifice in order to take turns of massive burst damage. She will be needing investment and strong sustain, but maybe you can kill the enemies before they kill you. So I'll explain how her kit works, including her self attack buff and discuss her traces. I'll view her eidolons and their damage increase alongside her pros and cons to see if she's worth your jades. Then I'll discuss her best relics and light cones, and yes, quantum set is actually good. I'm finished with her teams and best rotation. If you like this guide and want more, be sure to like and consider subbing, because I do in-depth guides on every unit in Star Rail. Also comment if you're pulling or have pulled Jing Liu. Anyway, let's begin. She is an ice destruction unit. Her setback as a destruction unit is the fact that she needs to be in her spectral state to dish out her large damage, and will also siphon ally HP on top. Her skill and ult will grant her Syzygy stacks, leading her to advance forward and buff herself heavily and granting her a brand new skill to destroy enemies. You'll want to level up her skill with her talent and then ultimate and then you can ignore her basics. Her traces give a lot of damage increase per level, so you want to max all the desired traces eventually. At level VT, her base HP is a weirdly high 1436, her base attack is 679 and her base defense is 485. Her speed is 96, but she has speed traces, and her energy cost is a very high 140, the highest in the game. Finally, as a destruction unit, she has a higher chance of being hit than the weaker paths. So now to look properly into her abilities. Her basic attack, Lucent Moon Glow, is pretty, but won't be used. It is a standard basic attack, and Jing Liu will want to be using her skill at all times. Her skill, Transcendent Flash, will deal ice damage to a single enemy and obtain one stack of Syzygy. This will do 60 toughness damage, consume 1 skill point, but only regenerate 20 NG, which is a first from a damaging skill. Her ultimate, Floor Ephemeral Dream Flux, is a blast type ultimate, dealing large ice damage to the selected target and a bit less on adjacent ones. She will also gain 1 stack of Syzygy after this attack. This will do 60 toughness damage to all enemies that were hit and regen 5 energy. It has a high cost of 140 energy though. So these stacks of Syzygy will accumulate and are used in her talent, Crescent Transmigration. When she has two stacks, she enters the Spectral Transmigration state, which will do five things. It will first advance her forward by 100% when she first enters it, which means she immediately takes her next turn. It will then increase her crit rate by a large percentage, and then she gains a new enhanced skill and can only use that or her ultimate, and then when she attacks with any attack in the state, every attack will make her consume 4% of all other allies' max HP which will be used to increase her attack for this specific attack. Sissy stacks can stack up to 3 at E0, and when it drops to 0, no more cool spectral state. Remember you want to buff her after the turn she enters the state, as most buffs are 2 turns long. If you buff her before she enters, she loses a turn immediately from the advancement forward. So first let's quickly explain how we want to enter the state. We always want to enter it with 2 standard skills and we'll see exactly why in the rotation section. But basically if we use our ultimate to enter the state, we lose a potential turn of our spectral transmigration state. We also lose a lot of damage on our ultimate, which is about four to six times stronger when used in the spectral state. And we lose energy, which will ruin our rotation. Alt is the only way to extend the state during the state itself, since we replace our old skill. So we want to use ultimate during the spectral state. Next, let's explain this attack percent buff. She consumes 4% of other allies max HP, and she will give herself an attack percent buff that is equal to 540% of this HP consumption, up to a cap of 180% of her base attack at level 10. It sounds like a lot, but it's not that difficult. So basically the ideal buff is an 180% attack buff at max, which is insanely strong to have by the way. If we consider her signature at 582 base attack and her level 80 base attack of 679, she has 1,261 base attack. So we need 540% of this ally HP to give us a buff of 2,270 attack which means we need to consume 420 health. Since we consume 4% of max HP, that means our allies need to have 10,500 HP total, or 3,500 each. So this can be all allies equal, or two weaker units and someone like a Blade, Fushuan, Bailu, etc. It's really not too hard to cap out on. So her skill becomes enhanced during the state and is now Moon on Glacial River. It becomes a blast skill, dealing a large amount of ice damage to the selected target and less to adjacent targets. It won't consume skill points though, and instead consumes one stack of Syzygy. This skill would deal 60 toughness damage to the main target, 30 on adjacent, and regen 30 energy instead of 20 like the standard skill. 
Finally, her technique, Shine of Truth, is a dimension technique and is our third so far, but it is extremely unique since it moves around you unlike Waltz and Himiko's. It will create a dimension around you, even after swapping characters, and any enemy inside will become frozen, which will also break any destructibles, meaning you can do stuff like this. When entering combat with the dimension, you'll gain 15 energy and a stack of Syzygy, and have a 100% base chance to freeze enemy targets for one turn, meaning they take some damage on their turn. And this freeze will happen for every wave, but not the energy or Syzygy stack. Don't build effect here for this by the way. It's uh, great to use for ramp up, but now you ideally want to get hit or get a kill in the first two actions, or your rotation will be a bit annoying and subject to more RNG. As for traces, they aren't too special, but the stat bonuses are. Her first will grant her 35% effect resistance when she's in her spectral state. This gives her an 86% chance of being debuffed if the enemy has a 100% base chance debuff. It's okay and can come in clutch, but will be very good in the future if we get effect resistance buffers. A second grants her a 10% action advancement when using her standard skill. So it lets you get to your next skill a bit quicker, nice for ramping up, but is useless if you're using Bronya. A final one will grant her 20% ultimate damage when in her spectral state. Another reason to use her ult during the state. Her trace stat bonuses however are crit damage, speed and HP% percent in that order. So we have our first crit damage primary trace bonus, meaning she gets a whopping 37.3% crit damage instead of 24% like Zila. We also have our first speed trace bonus, giving her 9 speed at max. And then we have 10% HP, which is whatever, and is there to avoid giving her 3 godly traces. Now onto Eidolons, and let's check out how much damage increase they provide. Her E1 will grant her 24% crit damage when using her ultimate or enhanced skill. That's great. But then it will give them a 100% multiply value increase if the attack hits only a single target. This sounds weird, but basically it means your skill, that is supposed to do 250% to the single selected target, will now do 350% if the target is alone. The ultimate will go from 300% to 400%. Very big increase and a 44% DPS increase if you're always against one enemy, which won't ever happen, so watch out when you see this big number. In full AoE, it's about a 7% increase, so for the true increase, it's somewhere in between 7% and 44%. Her E2 makes her first enhanced skill after an ultimate have an 80% damage boost. Damage percent is lovely, and we get a 9% DPS increase overall. Her E3 boosts her ultimate damage and increases her attack cap, now needing more HP but giving more attack for a 6% DPS increase. E4 will increase this cap again by 30% of her base attack, now letting her buff herself by 228% attack, which is pretty ridiculous for a DPS. And now we get 7% more DPS overall. Her E5 will buff her skill for a 5% DPS increase, and finally her E6 will let her obtain another stack of Syzygy when entering the spectral state, so she will have 3 when she first enters, and the cap now increases to 4. This means you can have 3 enhanced skills every state, or 4 if you use your ultimate correctly. If you use Ting Yun or get kills, you can get even more, it's pretty insane. This is a 17% DPS increase, but my rotation hurt it a little bit, so according to Grimro, it's a 21% DPS increase. So for Adlons, I'd suggest going for E1 or E6. In between, they're all just nice, but nothing special. So now, what are the best relics she can use? Well, my quantum set Jin Liu angered some people, but the maths is now here to back it up. First of all, you can go 4 Ice, 2 Musk, 2 Ice, 2 Hacker, 2 Ice, or 4 Quantum, and Jing Liu will still be shredding enemies. When I talk about a set being best, it's by like 1-4% to unless you have ideal conditions, and you should only care if min-maxing. So for the least amount of farming, go 2 Musk, 2 Ice, but now onto the two best sets, 4 Ice and 4 Quantum. So the thing with 4 Ice is it loses value because of crit damage and damage percent buffs, which you can get a lot of, and since she will focus on stacking crit damage with her crit rate buffs, it will be saturated even more so. Then you include stuff like Bronya, Broken Keel, etc. It still is basically her best, but let's see when Quantum is better. Quantum Set's Defense Ignore doesn't care about saturation. You'll be stacking tons of crit damage, damage percent, attack percent, etc. through her Light Cone, through Harmony Units, through Relics, through Subsets and Main Sets. But Death Shred and Death Ignore are all separate to these and actually increase in strength the more you have of it, up to a cap of 100% Death Shred. So versus any quantum weak enemy, signature or not, this 20% death ignore is more potent than the benefit of 4 ice. Versus non-quantum weak enemies, you'll need Silver Wolf or Pella, when including a harmony like Bronya, in order for quantum to beat ice. Here is the flow chart I made explaining all of the different options. So basically just farm only musketeer like Grimro does and you won't have to worry about minimal damage increases. 
but seriously go whatever you have farmed, they are all similar in power. For plain ornaments, Rotulent is her best and the other two are a slight DPS loss, but still usable of course. Remember, Rutilant will be activated during her spectral state as it will buff her crit rate to above the 70% threshold. For main stats, you want to go crit damage chest, speed boots, ice damage orb and attack rope. You can go crit rate chest if you somehow can't hit this 50% crit rate threshold, but remember to keep a good crit ratio if you do that. Attack boots are only really usable with a very fast Bronya where you'd skill spam to bring Jing Liu up to her high speed. Attack percent orb is going to be a massive DPS loss on Jing Liu, and finally energy rope is not needed and is thus a DPS loss. For an endgame ideal stat range, you want to get at least 2.5k attack, a 50 to 200 crit ratio, and 134 speed. So focus on getting your crit rate to 50, then crit damage and attack. With her speed traces and speed boots, you only need two speed subsets. Now onto Lycones. Her signature is by far her best in slot. It gives her crit damage, which is nice, but then gives damage percent and death ignore, which ignore her oversaturated attack percent buffs unlike most other destruction Lycones. The way it works is if any ally other than the wearer loses HP or gets attacked, you'll gain a damage percent stack, up to 3, and at 3 stacks, your next attack will ignore a percentage of the enemy's defense. Every attack in the spectral state, which is over 90% of her damage by the way, will immediately fulfill the max buff, since it will consume 3 allies HP at once, and grant her 42% damage and 12% death ignore every attack in this state. It is insane for her and nearly 20% better than other options. This won't work if you consume your own HP or if you hit yourself, it's other allies based on my tests. So if you want it for another unit, they'd have to have allies be hit a lot, or you'd have to have a Jing Liu in the same team. Here's a chart of all other light cones, they're all pretty similar in strength since you're already stacking most of their stat bonuses. Again, Eon is decent as a free to play option, but you need to break for it to be top tier. The other 5 star options are too niche or annoying to proc, and Clara's whilst a bit easier, provides attack percent as a bonus and is thus pretty weak. Daniel's is good for the high base stack and crit, but using basics will stall your ramp up time even more so, and the energy doesn't even help to get to that 140 energy unless you're spamming basics, which don't do. For Jing Liu's rotation, it is pretty much fixed, and you don't want to fear away from it, barring with Ting Yun, which requires a different strategy. You want to double skill into your enhanced state, and ideally enhance skill into ultimate into two more enhanced skills and rinse and repeat. This requires a hit or a kill once every four turns, which is very doable as Jing Liu. If you use your technique, you will do this rotation but one turn earlier, meaning you need to kill or get hit before your second proper turn starts. For a Ting Yun rotation, you'll want to Ting Yun ult Jing Liu and you want to use Jing Liu's technique. And instead of enhanced skilling before your ult in your spectral state, you want to ult first after you've entered the state. This means if you have a fast enough Ting Yun with ideally a 3 turn rotation, you can get another Ting Yun ult before your state ends, and you can thus extend it twice, for a total of 4 whole enhanced skills. Ting Yun should be able to replicate this on the next rotation too. Before her synergies and teams, let's discuss her pros and cons now that we have all that info on her. Her pros are her self buffs of course. All that attack percent, crit rate and even advancement forwards. It means no matter what, the spectral state will be hitting like crazy without any supports. Another is her high damage. High damage is good, we like damage. Next we have less skill point usage. This is always going to be great especially for a main DPS. It means heavier SP usage on supports or the possibility of dual DPS teams. Then we have easy buff timing. Since she has specific turns of burst damage, you can time your Ting Yun ult, Bronya ult, etc during her spectral state instead of having to reapply buffs throughout her whole rotation like with units like Daniel. Her technique is awesome and super fun and makes overworld and simulator universe a little easier. And finally her HP consumption makes her versatile as Blade already likes this and more units in the future may too. This can also lead her to proccing future or current light cone and relic effects for your allies which is very cool. For cons we have the weak out of state damage. It's fine since she has advancement forward but it definitely feels bad to dish out no damage a whole turn. This combos with her ultimate and its forced rotation. You want to ult in the state if you don't want to miss out on 10 NG, about 4 times the damage from ulting and a whole nother enhanced skill per spectral state. She also requires heavy investment despite her big buffs. You want to be hitting that 50% crit rate as well as investing in traces. From level 7 talent to level 10, she gains a 4% crit rate increase and a 34% attack boost in all of her spectral state's attacks, which is very big. One final problem is her autoplay since she will just ult whenever, 
and this also combines with the fact that she wants buffs during her state and not on the skill that enters her into it or else she loses buff value and this will happen a bunch in autoplay. For Sinji's her best support will be Bronya. The damage percent is vital since she has no sources of it and the bonus attack and crit damage on top is of course lovely. The advance forward is the real deal though, removing any ramp up needed to enter the spectral state and since Jing Liu uses less SP than most DPS, you can skill spam on Bronya just fine. Bronya can buff multiple DPS with her ult too which is nice for dual DPS setups. You want to run a high speed Bronya with hack space if you want or a 134 Bronya with Jing Liu at 135 with Bronya not on hacker space or win set, it will ruin your speed tuning. For another support, you have Ting Yun. Ting Yun is just Ting Yun being OP with attack percent, damage percent, energy, and additional damage all in one. The energy can allow you to extend the state even further, and at E6 Jing Liu, you could do some real fun things. And finally, we have Pella, and Silverwolf can be put here as a much stronger but single target variant of Pella. The SP generation is always nice, and the AoE defense shred is immense. E4 Pella provides ice resistance shred on top and since Jing Liu won't be hoarding skill points, she can afford to use it now and then. The defense shred can also combine with Jing Liu's signature defense ignore for even more damage as a final bonus synergy. For sub DPS, you can bring Blade, a peak synergy of hers. She can activate his talent very frequently, allowing for some insane and consistent damage from Blade. She also helps with longevity stacks, but those aren't too difficult. Another sub DPS could be Clara, since she dishes out nice damage and can avoid using skill points too. Bushwan is great for her. The HP she has provides nearly enough to max out her attack buff alone, so it's easy with two other teammates. Bushwan also provides crit rate to help out with the crit threshold too, and a solo sustain is always going to be good. The heals, though small, are enough for Jing Liu's HP consumption unless you go into long fights. With Blade though on top, it might be a bit hard, but it is definitely possible from my tests. You just kill the enemy so fast. And then finally she synergizes with Abundance units, which will compensate for her HP consumption. So if teams you want to go Jing Liu, then two Harmonies or Harmony and Annihility, and then an Abundant Solar Sustain or Fu Xuan. You can also replace a second support with Blade and get a lot more potential if the support is a dual buffer. My favorite but expensive team is Fu Xuan, Blade, Jing Liu, Bronya, buffing Jing Liu with Bronya and letting Blade spam talents and killing the enemies so fast they don't have a chance to strike. For a safer variant though, you can go for an Abundance unit. Hyper Carry, Jing Liu, high performing teams are Jing Liu, Bronya, Pella, and a Solar Sustain, or Jing Liu, Bronya, Ting Yun, and a solo sustain. You can, of course, run Ting Yun and Pella if you don't have Bronya too. Against Quantum Week or in general, Silver Wolf, Pella, Jing Liu is a very strong core too, hitting 100% death ignore with her signature. Anyway, let me know how your pools went or how much you've saved and what your impressions of her are. Thanks to my lovely members, thank you all for watching and have a go today.